Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing with the KiCad tutorial series and this is video number 6. In this video I want to show you the essential steps that you need to take for finalizing your schematic before you move on to the PCB design. So I'm going to split this video into two parts because I don't want this video to be unnecessarily long. These steps will make sure that we're not jumping into the PCB layout without ensuring that our schematic is rock solid and without errors and also making sure that we have considered everything properly. Now learning to design beautiful circuits, schematics and PCBs is only part of the journey. If you want to bring your designs to life, you need PCBWay. PCBWay is a high quality manufacturer of PCBs and they can assemble the PCBs for you as well. The order process is very simple. You upload your Gerber files and they will give you a quote very quickly. One of the things I really like about PCBWay is their shared projects, which is a community driven platform where makers can share their electronic projects with other people. I also share my projects here. So if you ever wanted to order one of the PCBs that I've designed on video, you can do that through PCBWay and their website. So again, a huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and making this content possible. Now back to the video. In this video, we'll cover the complete process of finalizing a schematic in KiCad, taking it from a drawn diagram to a state where it's fully prepared for the PCB layout. So this isn't just about making the PCB or the schematic look good. It's about ensuring that it's accurate and it's complete. And if you're going to look at the schematic at a future date, you want to make sure all the information that you considered during the design is there. So we'll start by making sure all our component values and specification are correct. Then we'll move on to annotating our components, which is crucial for identifying them later. We'll also look at adding net labels and power symbols for clarity which we've looked at briefly in the past as well. Of course, we'll perform a thorough electrical rule check or ERC check to catch any potential errors. A key part of the process is assigning footprints to our components, so I will detail that as well. We'll also generate a bill of materials or BOM, which is essential for ordering parts. And finally, we'll briefly touch on things like test points and saving the project. So the first step for finalizing the schematic is ensuring that the component values and the specifications that you've entered are absolutely correct. Now, obviously this is very obvious, but it's very easy to make mistakes during this process. And these mistakes can lead to your circuit not working or even worse, you know, just complete failure on the PCB side when you actually come to test it. Some things, for example, that might be wrong, a resistor might be specified as 100 ohms, but you've accidentally entered 1K. Or more commonly, a capacitor might need to be rated for let's say 16 volts, but you've only specified 10 volts. So these kind of errors can have serious consequences for the PCB and the product. So what you need to do to check, well, for resistors and for capacitors, you just double check the values. Make sure you go through each component individually, check the power ratings if that's a requirement, check the tolerance. For capacitors, verify the capacitance, verify the voltage rating. Verify the application that it's being used in. So if it's a audio application, then maybe ceramic is not the best choice, but it really does depend on the application for the dielectric material. And for ICs, you want to confirm the part numbers, the package. So part number is very important because you might accidentally get the wrong package. You want to make sure that the pins are configured properly, especially if you've drawn the component yourself. Actually, you should check it if someone else has drawn the component as well, because you might sometimes get errors. So always refer to the datasheet when you're making these checks and refer to the datasheet to ensure that the pinout on the schematic matches the actual component as well. So let's go into KiCad to see how we can do this. So I'm just going to look at this 5K1 resistor for starters. Now if I click on it and double click, you can see that I've got this component already pre-configured with part numbers and supply part numbers and everything. So I can go into the supplier, which is LCSC in this case, write down the part number, and you can see I've got a 5K1 resistor, 1% tolerance. Everything matches up in terms of what I need. So obviously that's very simple for a resistor. We can also do the same checks for our other components. So in this case, we can look at, let's say this component over here, which is a regulator. So I'm going to search the supplier for this. I'm just going to have a look at the pinout. So we have pin one, which is VN. And you can see over here that pin one is VN as well. Pin two is ground, which matches up. Pin four is no connect. Pin five is V out. And pin three is unable. So that all matches up. But we also want to check things like the output current requirements for our circuit. So let's say if the circuit's going to draw like two, 300 milliamps then this regulator is okay because this regulator can give 500 milliamps. 
but you want to make sure that you've sized your regulators appropriately. Again, this is not much to do with KiCad in itself because you should be doing this process for any circuit you're designing in any software. The next thing you want to check is the components that surround your regulator. So in this case, the typical application circuit recommends a one microfarad capacitor for the input and the output. So you can see I've got a 2.2 microfarad capacitor and a 10 microfarad capacitor. Now I didn't design this circuit but if I was designing it, I would probably reduce the size of these capacitors to 2.2 microfarads. But I'm going to leave it as is because we are following a tutorial from online. So essentially, what you want to do for all components and your schematic is make sure that you've sized them properly and that you've specified all the components properly as well. Obviously, you want to make sure that your schematic is correct. For example, you don't want the output connecting to this 5 volt over here. Once we've verified the component values, the next step is annotation. So in KiCad and in schematic design in general, annotations mean assigning unique reference designators to each component. These designators, like you can see on the screen now, you've got R1, R2, R3, got C1 for capacitors, C2, C3, got D for diodes, which is in this case is an LED diode, and we've got a shock key diode over here. You can choose different annotation schemes, but the default one in KiCad works just fine. So what you can do if you've not been updating the reference designators is click this button over here, which says annotate schematic. And then you can press annotate and it will annotate all the components for you. Now, if this is a first design and you want to get them numbered, like let's say R123, and then sometimes you might have a R17 over here or something like that, which you've added at a later date. So you can see that I've got R4 here and R11 here. And if I want that to be R5, you can clear all annotations and redo it. You can set the order just the way you want it. So in this case, you can set it left to right or going up and down. So we would choose this option over here. So these resistors would go R1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. I think I've followed the reference schematic that I've been using for this project. So I'm just going to leave it as is. This is also important for identifying the type of components for the PCB assemblers. So if you're going to pass this design on to someone else for assembly, you want to make sure that you're following the convention. So R for resistors, C for capacitors, and then U or IC for ICs, Q for transistors, D for diodes, things like that. There is a reference online that you can use for this to make sure that you are using the right designators for the components. Without proper annotation, you'd have a chaotic mess of components, all with the same generic names. Imagine trying to assemble a PCB where all resistors are just labeled R without any reference to them. So make sure your annotations are clear and organized. One thing I would say is if you're making significant changes, don't delete your annotations, don't clear your annotations. Just in case someone has reviewed the components or the schematic in the past, they will have looked at the components. So for example, let's say R1, R2, R3, they know that they're connected to this component over here. So in this case, it's a USB-C connector. Now, if you clear annotations and suddenly they change numbers, the person who's reviewed it in the past has lost all reference to what they were reviewing. So they need to start again. So, so I recommend not clearing annotations after first review. The next thing I want to talk about is making sure that all net labels and power symbols have been assigned correctly. So for example, I've got this CC line over here. I've got this USB D and DP. I could have just called it anything random, but I gave it a name that has some meaning to the PCB designer. And these meanings convey something to the PCB designer when it's routing them. So with DN and DP, they'll know that it's a differential pair. With the VBAT symbol, they'll know it's a power input and a power signal. So net labels, when it comes to the PCB design, will give names to those tracks. So when I'm laying out those tracks, for example, for B5, CC2 will appear on the track that I'm laying out, which will make it easier to see what's actually happening when doing the PCB design. Another thing that helps you do is simplify the schematic. So you can see over here that I've got LDO enable net label over here. Now I could have done this by just connecting this wire like this, but then I've got this wire going through the schematic all the way here, which can be very messy, especially if your schematic is more complicated than this. So net labels help to keep the schematic a little bit clearer as well, especially when you look at things like VBUS and VBAT. Now imagine trying to connect all the VBATs or the, all the VBUSes together. You'd have to have a wire that goes from here, somewhere like this, 
somewhere like this. And then for the bus, you'd have something like this, which you can see gets messy very quickly. So what this does is improves the readability of your schematic for review. And it's very important for complex circuits. For something simple, you don't need to worry about it. So I'm going to end this video at this stage and continue with this topic in the next video. Thank you for watching today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you have any feedback for me or if you want to add anything to this video topic, please add your comments as well. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.